Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of From a Woman to a Leader. And today, I'm very happy to talk with Smafna. I'll, sh- I'll soon introduce her, and we're going to talk about a topic that I think is very, very important, how to build psychological safety within your team. But first, let me introduce Swapna. So Swapna and I met, I think, uh, through Plateau HQ, I think. Uh, yeah, we had a session of mentoring and we stayed in touch ever since. So uh, that was great. And Swapna is an accomplished engineering leader. She has over 17 years of industry experience in building large-scale systems and high-performing teams. And Swapna's expertise revolved around building strategies to lead organizations to be more data-driven, along with platform and productivity engineering, serving product, finance, and machine learning. She is also highly passionate about improving diversity and inclusion in tech and is associated with Lean in Circles. I know that Swapna is also a mentor through multiple platforms, and you are also a keynote suite speaker. So, hi, Swapna, welcome. Hi, hi, Lenore. First of all, I just want to say it's incredibly an honor for me to be part of your, your podcast. So thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you, and it's completely my pleasure. I really like you and always enjoy catching up with you, and I'm sure that you have a lot of value to share. And okay, so we're t- going to talk about building psychological safety, but let's first, before we dive into that, Swapna, if you can kind of share your journey. Yeah, a little sure. bit. Yeah. So I, um, I came to US uh, to do my master's. And since then, I have been um, in some multinational national companies. Soon I had realized that if I want to get my creative juices going, then startups is the way to go. I really wanted to wear multiple hats, try to understand different uh, areas, not just engineering. And and since then I have been in uh, multiple startups. I started my leadership journey a couple of, um, I would say few startups back. I believe it was in Spring Park and it was kind of an accident. I started it because The team needed it and I just stepped up into that role. And since ever since then, I have been leading teams and uh, remote teams after that uh, to to build different different platforms and platform capabilities. And in somewhere in midst when I became a director of engineering and Headspace Health, I realized that I was stepping into different roles by minimum training to sometimes no training for leadership. And it was amazing to see, see some of my managers coming to me and saying the same thing. They wanted to know how I grew as a leader. And that's why I started a community called As Adapter, which is responsible for, or which one of our key mission is to help people adapt to their new leadership role. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. Yes, you started the up and I follow you and I, I see all the wonderful and articles that you publish on LinkedIn. So definitely I encourage everyone to follow uh, Swapna and AdaptUp and see all the beautiful and really valuable content that uh, you produce. So thank you for that. By the way, I also, I relate to that completely because when I started managing, no one told me how it's done. I completely failed along the way. There's experience, right? Yes. Yeah, there's plenty of mistakes. Yes. And we want to talk today about psychological safety. So first, tell, tell me why why this topic is uh, important to you. Yeah, uh, because the way we think about psychological safety is basically a shared belief among our team members. That is very much important for me because... They can freely express their thoughts, ideas, or concerns, or opinions um, without the fear of negative consequences. Like they shouldn't be fearing about embarrassment or punishment or some kind of a rejection. So for me, this concept of psychological safety is something that is very crucial because when psychological safety is present, you can see your team members sharing their ideas and perspectives openly 
admitting to the mistakes or seeking feedback without any fear of judgment, or even asking the questions and seek, seeking clarifications. Often I feel the aspect of the psychological safety is taken very lightly in, in, a, in companies. And when leaders try to prioritize psychological safety, that is when you create an environment where team members will feel comfortable challenging our ideas. Because as you said, right, Lemur, we, as we grow as a leader also, we are making our own mistakes. So you want somebody to keep you accountable. You want to make sure that they are giving you the right feedback because that in turn is very much helpful for your company and the organization. Yeah, and uh, I think that many organizations don't even think about this at all. I mean, I don't think this is something that is even being considered a uh, psychological safety. And I can relate that it's very important because a lot of times we are afraid to make mistakes. We are afraid to be, I don't know, uh, looked at as maybe incapable at least it happened to me, like I, I was afraid to speak up because I thought maybe someone will think I'm stupid or not capable. So it's kind of what, what I understand from you is like creating an environment that everyone feels safe to be who they are, to ask for help, to make mistakes. Yeah, I mean, for and me, psychological safety is not like nice to have. It is like a must have. Absolutely. I, and I completely agree with you completely. So now the million dollar question, now that we know what it is and we and let's assume we understand, we understand and agree that it is important. How do we create psychological safety? Yeah. I mean, there are a few specific things that uh, you can do to cultivate the psychological safety under your leadership, right? Um, for me, first and foremost, the most important part is communication. Encouraging open communication. As a, as a leader, I, I specifically, I encourage this kind of open communication with my employees by actively listening to their concerns and ideas. They should feel that there is a safe space for employees to voice their opinions. And I also lead by example. Basically, I admit to my mistakes, ask for feedback, and I'm very transparent and honest. And sometimes if there are situations where I feel vulnerable, I, I show my vulnerability to my team members because taking smaller steps in these directions, I feel that it will cultivate that trust and openness. There are two more aspects that I do. One is I will celebrate success immediately at that very moment because I feel that we cultivate a positive and supportive work culture. And I will provide feedback also at that very moment, because I do not undervalue either. I make sure that you, you, we provide our team members with feedback that will highlight the areas of improvements. And I do that at the very moment where I feel that there is the necessity. I don't wait for one on ones I don't wait for like media reviews or anything, mm -hmm. because that is absolutely critical for me. And the last thing, which I think Lemore, you and me both will agree on, is to embrace diversity. Yeah. Um, we have to embrace diversity and inclusivity, inclusivity in our workplace, workplace because the common misconception about psychological safety is it is always tied to engagement, employee engagement. It should truly be tied to employees feeling valued and respected because they should actively seek out diverse perspectives and ensure that everyone has an equal opportunity to contribute to our organization's success, because that in turn will hit your metrics of engagement at the end. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, one of the challenges I think is that uh, many times, even if you are exercising great leadership, you try to build a diverse team, you try to foster an inclusive environment when everyone feels safe. A lot of times the environment you're at, the company, the overall company, does not exactly align to those attributes. Um, and I don't know if you have experience with that, but what would you say to a leader that really try to cultivate psychological safety within their teams? And obviously, as you mentioned, like 
they are role models and exercise that as well. But how do they act within an organization that maybe, mm, I would say, maybe yeah. is less safe space? Yeah. yeah, and it has that is always a challenge, right? You know, I have been in situations in my previous companies where I I felt that there there is a lot more that needs to be done with diversity or DNI in 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 particular, and also there has to be a lot to be done with psychological safety. But at the same time, I truly, I value and I believe that an empowered employee who feels psychologically safe in the workplace, they know that they can be honest and can make mistakes. And for me, the, 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 the concept of psychological safety does not start with the organization. It starts with the leader itself. So even after being, because I'm a true believer of radical candor, so even if I think that my workplace is not giving that psychological safety, me being open and vulnerable and me giving the, my team members that space has always helped them understand that it then cultivates the whole environment of how we can change the workplace and how we can build, bring that feedback to our leadership. And that's how I have always managed these kind of you know, challenging situations. One of the things that I that comes to my mind is I remember I had actually presented in my in my previous organization. Uh, me and my team had realized that there are certain aspects in my workplace where unknowingly, because sometimes biases happen without unknowingly, right? They nobody mm -hmm. nobody realizes that they are biased, or sometimes the, those are the situations where you don't understand whether, how do you even react to those situations when the person who might be biased has not even registered it in their mind that they are biased. And I remember me and my team had pre presented a presentation where we had talked about the situation, how the employees have taken that messaging from these leaders and how that uh, messaging should have been put forward so that it would have been more inclusive and more uh, aligned to the DNA perspective. Absolutely. And you know, uh, Swapna, when I coach people, a lot of times um, I encourage them to be the example, to yeah. exercise, uh, not just related to psychological safety, but in general, when they see things that are not working as they should in an organization, be the change agent, exercise leadership and show how different way of working can make it, you know, can be better for the organization and then you can impact others. Yes, yes, totally. It's it's basically leading by example, the more as you said. Absolutely, yeah. And going back to the leader themselves and, and exercising psych psychological safety, how do you deal with, you know, a conflict, disagreements? How do you allow psychological safety in a team while you have different kind of opinions, and you, we know how it is, tech people, they have a lot of opinions, sometimes very strong opinions. Right, 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 right. And the way you look at it, Lamar, is if you are building, trying to build a culture of psychological safety, and if you have been successful in doing that, these are the moments when it will actually show you the, the, it will actually show you the, the results of your psychological safety culture. Because every single individual, right, be it engineering or any other organization, the moment there are difference of opinion, there is going to be a conflict. And that is the exact moment where these kind of culture actually are the best culture that you can have in your organization. Because the moment there is a conflict, if every team member is aware that they can, if this, this is a place where they can voice their opinions. And at the end, they have to come up with a, at the end, they are going to come up with a common language of how they are going to treat that situation. It is a win-win situation. But I will not deny the fact that there are sometimes some disagreements where things just doesn't, don't go the way you would like it, like it to go. And at that point, I usually 
make sure that I am available in such kind of conversations where I will be the one who is steering those conversations. And at that point, me, the earlier thing that I mentioned that I appreciate my team members right away and I also give feedback right away, that comes to play for me. Where I start giving feedback and I make sure that people understand where are the things that they can tweak a bit, a bit but they, so that they can bring that inclusivity in their conversations. Absolutely. And by the way, I, I, uh, I looked at those conflicts and uh, uh, arguments a lot of times with a positive angle. And um, because when, when you have diverse teams, you have different opinions and perspectives, which sometimes can lead to maybe even arguments. But I see that as a good thing because a team that has the different opinions produce better results, bring different ideas. And it's about managing, as you mentioned, like managing those discussions in a way that everyone feels encouraged to share their opinion without dismissing other people yes yes and that's where the feedback comes to picture if you feel that somebody is dismissing somebody else yeah yeah absolutely um what are some co common obstacles to to building uh, psychological safety and how can leaders overcome them yeah i mean from the way i look at it there are couple of obstacles that come because this is something that I have been having conversations with different leaders at this point. The first is comfort. Developing the psychological safety should not be confused with creating a comfortable workplace, right? In fact, too much comfort can lead to a reduction in psychological safety. Like for example, when an employee feels too comfortable at work, there is a risk that they will fall into a kind of trying to stimulate, like kind of, they might get complacent. When trying to stimulate psychological safety, you can get interactions as lazy nods of agreement, agreeable shrugs, or silence when asked directly for criticism, right? This could lead in lack of progress on both individuals and team levels. So for me, uh, for as a leader, for me, it is important to continue taking small, interpersonal risks as a team to accumulate a shared sense that it isn't that risky to be risky. For example, voicing what you think the interpersonal risk is holding the person or a group back. If somebody is holding a group back, you should voice that opinion, regardless how much uh, valued or senior that person might be or acknowledging how small the risk or discomfort might be. Or asking the room or a specific person for a different idea. I know it is hard for us to, to kind of isolate a person directly, but that is some of the things that we need to start doing if we want to build a psychological safety. We are basically trying to bring team, team members slowly out of their comfort zone. The second aspect is only focusing on celebrating achievements. This is something that is very important to me because people celebrating milestones within an organization is a key element and every single organization does that. However, it is also important not only to reflect on your good moments, but also to pay attention and reflect on the things that didn't go as planned and taking accountability on that, like providing a moment of reflection to all the stakeholders, ensuring that everyone feels comfortable to talk about the things what went wrong. And even holding our leadership responsible for postmortems. Because engineers do postmortem when things go wrong. Why not engineering leaders do postmortem, right? When things go wrong and the leadership level. The third aspect is misinterpretation of the term of psychological safety. This psychological safety topic uh, has received a great deal of attention right now. The reason is why, because organization wants to invest in this because they are thinking it is tied and to the outcomes, to high revenue, to increasing productivity or fewer absences. It is for sure, but you don't have, you shouldn't lose sight on the essence of it. Creating a workplace where everyone can have their own identity and they can feel that they can bring their true self at work. That actually is the very core of psychological safety. 
And the last thing I will also mention is sometimes the leadership style also influences the degree in which the psychological safety is experienced in the work, workplace. For example, if you have an authoritative leadership style, you have to be very mindful when you are having these kind of conversations to make sure that you're presenting it correctly. And the psychological safety is not just a term within your team members, if that makes sense. Absolutely, yeah. And I think uh, the last thing you mentioned, I mean, it's, it's kind of, I remember something uh, about the coochie I had. Uh, you have to treat people differently, right? I mean, uh, and, and a lot of times to allow someone to feel safe, to say what they think, you need to treat them a certain way. Uh, some people will need a more supportive, comfortable environment to feel comfortable sharing an idea or opinion because they may be, suffering from confidence issues or imposter syndrome or what have you. And you need to be conscious of that and allow them the space to feel safe. While some people that may be more confident in themselves feel comfortable sharing their opinions. So it's also about adjusting your leadership style. Yes, totally. And that's the reason why the very first thing I mentioned was comfort because often leaders, and I have done this myself, I have done this in state in the past, where when I have felt that somebody is not comfortable, I have kind of left them to the thinking that I'm doing the best I can for them because I wanted them to be in their safe space. But now that when I think back, I feel that I should have actually doubled down and had, had and had come up with an understanding of what will make them more comfortable in voicing their opinions. So that's exactly why comfort is something that is always on top of my mind. Yeah, and I think the other point you made about uh, celebrating successes, but also uh, retrospecting on failures or mistakes is also crucial because uh, I've been in more than one organization that did not tolerate mistakes. Meaning that when someone made a mistake, it was treated very harshly. It's not that someone would fire you on the spot, but you <laughs> let's, let's put it that way, it would be very unpleasant. And companies don't think about it, but when there is a culture that failure is a bad thing, people will not feel safe because they will constantly be worried about making a mistake. Yeah, yeah, totally. Now let's uh, switch gears to talk about diversity and inclusion and how can building psychological safety contribute to building a more inclusive and diverse work culture? So uh, an important part of psychological safety is valuing diversity, equity, and inclusion. And this is something that I personally tell all my um, managers that to understand all these words, when we say D and I and B, what exactly diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging means, because employees feeling able to be their whole, whole self at work means they can exhibit their race, their ethnicity, their gender, their background, their family status, other parts of identity that they have without any judgment. And intertwining this psychological safety with diversity and inclusion efforts in workplace, it allows employees to feel safe being themselves since their diversity is welcome. Because when you say you're welcoming their diversity, what you're really saying is you're welcoming them into the organization just the way they are and you feel as an organization that they are a value add to your organization not a value fit to your organization when you say that somebody is a value add that's when the diverse workforce they will improve your employees productivity increasing innovations and saving organizations money. The reason I say innovations is because when a diverse mindset get together and become a team, you will see miracle, miracles happening because each of them will have their own perspective. So that's the reason for me, the key metrics, uh, if you are thinking about metrics, you should first think about the input that you're putting towards for psychological safety. 
So you need to celebrate and value and respect other diversity, which will lead your psychological safety within work and environment and foster a more positive and open-minded system. And all of this is very crucial and it is not just, again, a nice to have. This is something that should be on top of your mind if you're thinking that you want to bring, build a safer environment for your team members. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And I always try to have a very diverse team. And, and as you mentioned, I mean, diverse team brings much better results because you get variety of opinions and not just everyone thinks the same. And now we talk about psychological safety and providing safe space. As a leader, you also are, is a, are, you are accountable for the, what the team produces. So how do you balance you know, having a safe space for your team while also keeping them accountable, having a well-performing team. Yeah. So th this is where the feedback comes to play, right? I'm not you sure I understand. Oops. Sorry about that. Siri started to talk to me. Yeah, go ahead. So uh, that's where the feedback comes to play, right? Because once you have built that kind of a safe place for your team members, Giving appreciation as well as giving constructive feedback at the very moment is very crucial then. Because the moment you start having those discussions immediately after a certain situations have happened, that's when your team is already aware that it is going to be an open conversation between you and your team members where you're going to discuss about the situation and you're going to discuss about what you were expecting in the situation. And then you are going to also hear from the team member of how they were thinking about that situation. So when the moment these becomes like open dialogue, even for you to give those kind of feedback becomes very easy because it's kind of an expectation that has put forward in within your team. And that's why I feel that making people accountable to their work and performance becomes something that is that that just comes with it once you have the right things in place. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and one of the great strategies I found to create accountability is always asking for people to what they want to commit to. Yes. And mm -hmm. I found that when I ask my teams or, you know, individuals, what, what, what can you do? What the accountability is much higher than me telling them, oh, you need to deliver this by this date. Yes, yes, totally. Now we're going to shift to talk about remote work because obviously nowadays everyone work remote, hybrid. How do you think remote work impact psychological safety within the team and what strategies leaders can use to maintain it in a distributed environment? Yeah, so... Remember in today's world, right, when after pandemic, the hybrid work environment, the organizations are increasingly relying on the teams to achieve their goals and objectives. There are some studies out there which have also shown that effective teamwork can yield significant benefits. And we all agree to that at this point. However, creating and maintaining effective team is not an easy task in hybrid work. But now that's why we are in this very difficult spot where organizations are now relying on teams. And now the teams have to figure out a way to maintain an effective team structure. Workplace effectiveness can be driven by team dynamics. And now the team dynamics comes in play when you have these diverse team members who are working together. It also elaborates on clear and challenging tasks to motivate the team members. So when you're investing in teamwork, organizations can enhance their competitive advantages. So now when you think about team, team is nothing but a group of individuals. And individuals will thrive only and only if they trust and feel motivated in their workplace. So as a leader, it becomes my responsibility for creating that environment where your team members can thrive and achieve their full potential. And that's exactly what our psychological safety needs. 
And by the way, when we talk about psychological safety, it is not the same from all for all the teams. So that's why it becomes a leader's responsibility to put in all the strategies that we talked about, like communication, then appreciation, or giving feedback, thriving for growth mindset, into your inculcate that to your team so that they can become this group of individuals who are having this shared understanding and shared motivation amongst themselves. Absolutely. And uh, do you have some strategies to build trust with people you never met before? Because this is one of the questions I keep being asked. How do you do that with people you never met and you always worked remote with? So during remote, so I have hired many people through this, during this remote environment. And we have like been now in this world for like more now for years. So the, the very first thing that I do is whenever I'm t- working with somebody whom I have not met earlier, I will have one-on-ones with them, which is not about talking about work, but talking about themselves. What works for them? What doesn't work for them? What are the things that really excite them? How, and this is a most important question for me, how they like to get appreciated for their work. So the moment I start having these conversations, trying to understand a little bit more about them as, as, a, as, as an individual, that is how I have started building that trust from them. The second aspect is, even though we are in this hybrid environment, I have myself made some significant efforts in meeting that meeting these people uh, in, in person, be it through on-site, be it through me actually flying down somewhere, but I have made that effort for them. And the last aspect is making sure that they are paired as when we are doing onboarding, so when we are trying to assign them with projects, I make sure they are paired with individuals who have been with my team for a longer period of time, because then they get the chance to know about my team and the organization itself from somebody who has been here for a while. So they also have that opportunity to explore the organization a little bit more. Absolutely. That's wonderful. And Swapna, it's been so great talking with you and you've shared so much value. I wanted to ask you, how can people contact you? Oh, um, I am on LinkedIn. So you can just like send me an invite and from there I can take it. Or you can also send me an email. Um, my email is swapnasavand.gmail.com. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much, Swapna, for being here today and sharing all those insights. Thank you so much, Limon, for having me. It was wonderful to be here.